Yo, dudes. Um, a bit tired today. Still, let's do a little one. This is the front cover of the Financial Times today, the 15th. Merkel stands firm on tackling crisis. Chancellor Merkel warns not to burden Germany with unacceptable solutions, as in don't waste my time, and also don't expect that Germany has an endless supply of money. It does not. This is why ultimately they will go to the uh, source that is uh, an unlimited supply of money, which is the European Central Bank in the end, I'm sure. Second one down, Osborne, £100 billion pound plan for the UK economy. Osborne's the, the money boy. Chancellor and Bank, that's um, Mervyn King at the Bank of England, batten down the hatches for Euro debt storm. They've got this plan going. Um, lots of people have written lots of things about it this morning, but it's not particularly clear what's quite going on. It looks like, I can't see that it is QE, although most people seem to be describing it as QE. I think there are two things going on. The Bank of England is saying that there will be a term repo facility going down for short term amounts, uh, for short term, short term amount of time but lots of money, as in if the shit hits the fan, don't worry, you can put any old crap to us and we'll give you lots and lots of dosh. In other words, it's an emergency thing. That's kind of for when the euro blows up. And a more longer term thing, I think it's more like an Eltro than QE. I think it's, it's lending this 100 billion, as in it's like the Eltro, that the banks will put in to uh, the Bank of England uh, bits of paper, be they mortgages or treasuries, gilts, uh, whatever they might be, and they get cheap money back. Um, I haven't seen a number um, put out, but Eltro was 1% that the banks borrow at, so I think it'll probably be something similar. And it's meant to be directly to lend to the British people uh, for mortgages and small business lending. Um, why would people want a mortgage? The idea obviously is to keep house prices up, which isn't very useful, is it? Bottom left there, central bankers brace for euro breakup. Survey finds fear of at least one exit. The central bankers basically are looking at euro and going, oh no, because there's really, there's no answer. It's not as though I mean, some people say, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, but nobody's... Have you ever come across anybody or any answer that you think is the answer to the euro problem besides breaking it all up? But you can imagine what breaking it all up is. Um, very, very, very difficult. Um, any, any nice answer? No, I haven't heard of one in four years. Stocks rebound on hopes for stimulus. U.S. weekly jobless claims add to Fed intervention talk uh, in the United States. The weekly uh, unemployment um, figures were bad, and that means that the Fed would have more room um, for stimulus. So stocks rebound, equities go up on hopes of stimulus, not because the equities are good, because they think the Fed could uh, go for QE3, which is pretty crazy in its own way, isn't it? Buy equities because the Fed does something else. And therefore, everyone will think equities will go up, not because equities deserve to go up, but um, just like Keynes said, it's a beauty contest. You're not actually judging the beauty of anything. You're judging what other people might imagine beauty to be. If you can imagine what I meant there, that's what Keynes meant. If you wanted explaining, ask me in comments. Business Insider, who I used to quote quite a lot but stopped because of things like this. Chart of the day. This chart destroys the idea of peak oil. And it's from the BP um, Global Energy Review thing, which I've never liked. I don't know why everybody looks upon it as a bit of a Bible, but I've never liked it. Don't know why. Don't know why. Anyway, this um, 2B is from it. And its distribution of proved reserves, 1991, the little wheel, 
2001 the middle wheel and 2011 the big wheel on the right and where these proved reserves are the point being that the reserves have gone from 1991 at 1032,000 million barrels up through 1267,000 million barrels to now 1652,000 million barrels um, back to that headline chart of the day this proves the idea of peak oil is destroyed by this of course it's not and anybody that quotes reserves when trying to talk about peak oil is a prat that's an idiot a fool because it's not the reserves so much obviously reserves are important it's the amount that you can get out each minute <laughs> each day each year whatever you want to time you want to call it, you've got to be getting it out at a constant rate at a something rate and it is that something rate that's important so link number i'll put it in as link number three to the bp statistical review and you can read all of it about it yourself it's all very colorful and all very informative let's go on to what will be number four now and my mate grigor and OPEC crude oil production um, millions of barrels a day going back to 2005 and it's really very stable isn't it really um, the lowest at 30 the highest at 33 and the look where the highest is in the middle of 2008 when the price was highest this is OPEC trying to pump as much as possible to keep the price down yeah 2008 see it there the highest one 33 million barrels a day um, when the high price went to 147 um, OPEC trying to do its best if it's got any marginal barrels it was really pumping them out then next uh, share of global oil production now um, I would have said it if it was 60 40 but it's not quite 60 40 it's 57 percent goes to non OPEC and 43 to OPEC to just a little figure to have in your mind but if you want to keep it nice and easy in your mind uh, 60 non OPEC 40 OPEC um, global oil production um, non OPEC is a much bigger producer than OPEC and it's generally accepted that non OPEC if in doubt pump their little tits off they're at it as much as they can all the time they don't dick around with we'll put down production not production or anything they just pumpity 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 okay so non OPEC um, annual oil production but without Russia in it yeah no Russia so this is why the price went up in 1947 so going back to 2001 I think the other one was 2002 but the, the, roughly exactly the same time periods and you can see that's why the price was going up non OPEC without Russia the price was going down and down and down and down sorry the the production levels were going right down and bottomed in the summer of 2008 where the price was highest and that's why the price was highest because of non OPEC ex Russia production was down and just to balance things up put Russia back in and this is non OPEC average annual crude um, with Russia in there so all the 60% the non OPEC but you can st still see even with Russia that was really pumping as well in 2008 um, it was um, down at the bottom there it had gone up to 2004 but was sliding down even with Russia and um, OPEC was pumping all that it could but couldn't make up that difference and that's why the price went up but things have slightly changed since uh, finish with this one California grid hit record solar generation peak California the green state ish not really the IWR Germany's renewable energy organization issued a release saying that under a cloudless sky on May the 25th German solar generation reached 22,000 megawatts that's just one day was it this year I think it was this year wasn't it May probably was a month ago reached 22,000 megawatts 
uh, getting towards the bottom, while California is setting its own records for solar production. Stephanie McCorkle, Director of Communications of the California Independent System Operator, noted that a new record was set on June the 8th, California pumping it out. 849 megawatts of solar generation on the system. So on June the 8th, California did 849 megawatts. And on May the 25th, Germany did 22,000 megawatts. 22,000 megawatts Germany, 849 megawatts California. Good night, California. Where goes California goes the United States or something? Gosh, they'll soon be up to the Californian equivalent of 849 megawatts to save the day. <laughs>